On February the 1st, the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell was interviewed by 60 Minutes. In the interview, he said that the US federal government was on an unsustainable path because national debt was growing faster than GDP. The episode also highlighted that 30 years from now, the debt is predicted to be $144 trillion, or $1 million per household. Hello and welcome to Lot 49, the channel where I talk about British, American and global politics, and the organisations and parties trying to make them better. Today's topic is the US federal government debt crisis. I will try to answer the following questions. Why does the US acquire national debt? How does it acquire it? How big is it? What percentage of total government spending is spent paying it off? How has the size of the US national debt changed over time? And if it has increased recently, why? I will then provide a conclusion and offer a solution or a ray of hope before ending the video. The US government acquires debt in order to pay for projects it doesn't currently have the money for. This can be due to a decrease in tax revenue, possibly caused by tax cuts, an increase in government spending, or spontaneous spending, which has never been budgeted for and hence doesn't have a fund set aside for it. These could be important projects such as infrastructure spending, or projects the government deems important, such as providing weapons and ammunition to the various hybrid wars it wages against other countries. To pay for this deficit in revenue, the federal government borrows money by selling treasury bonds, bills, notes, floating rate notes, and treasury inflated protected securities called TIPS. The current US national debt stands at just over $34 trillion. In December last year, it cost $288 billion to maintain that debt. That's $170 billion more than the US Senate's proposed $118 billion border and Ukraine deal. This $288 billion a year will take up to 17% of the US's 2024 federal budget. So how has the size of US national debt changed over time? This chart from Statistica shows how the federal debt, also known as the public debt, has changed since 1990. While it has continuously increased over time, there are points where the rate has rapidly increased, namely 2008 with a financial crisis, and in 2020 with the COVID outbreak and lockdowns. Since that point, it has skyrocketed. This chart from Investopedia compares the national debt to the country's GDP over time. We can see that it remained pretty balanced up until the 1980s and the election of Ronald Reagan and the implementation of Reaganomics, after which national debt began to grow faster than GDP. We see another surge around 2008 with the financial crisis, after which the ratio remained stable at roughly equal national debt to GDP. And finally, we see another spike in 2020 with the COVID pandemic. The ratio improved afterwards as economies opened up again, but remained high with national debt being roughly 120% of GDP. Finally, this last table from the US Treasury shows the national debt each year, along with any major fiscal events that took place. This part of the table only covers 2007 to 2023, but on the US Treasury website it goes back further. Anyway, from this we can see more of the details that shaped the growth of US national debt. In conclusion, the US government has had a high debt to GDP ratio for a long time, and it has been added to by both the Republicans and the Democrats. But since the Reagan administration, this has really started to take off as a result of funding tax cuts and emergency spending through taking on debt. Now the country has reached a point where it has become almost dependent on raising money through debt. What hope is there, you may ask? Well... The Green Party of the USA has as part of its platform the aim to reduce the national debt. 
it has identified that there is a shortfall in tax revenue and that the government therefore raises money through debt in order to fund its projects. The party's solutions to the problem are increasing taxes on large companies and polluters, eliminating loopholes for the super-rich and decreasing expenditures in some areas, especially for war, armaments and corporate welfare. While these solutions are not a quick fix, voting in the Green Party for the federal government is necessary to begin the process. Anyway, thank you for watching. This video was inspired by one of Lena Petrova's videos. If you